Hello, hello, hello. I'm so excited. Um, I uh, So one of my favorite artists, which I'm part of her group, uh, Julie from Pulling Your Heart Out, she, I inspired her. So I was like so excited. So the last video that I posted um, is what inspired her. I had posted that in the group of what I did with the gold. And so I was like, oh my God, I'm so excited. So anyways, um, so today I'm going to try to do it again. Um, again, the gold I use because I'm obsessed with their pigments is KP Pigments. You can find this on Amazon. Um, that's what it looks like. And um, it's very, very intense with color. Um, so I'm going to be using that for both molds. Um, the difference that I'm going to do this time, I'm going to stick with the liquid tax with one and the other one I'm going to do with alcohol inks. Just curious to know if it changes at all. Um, I do use the platinum. Um, it's the ultra clear. Um, and, uh, I do use exactly the way it says on the direction. So I do two to one exactly. I don't do more than, than one or the other. So, um, in case anyone's wondering or, um, what have you, um, so for the U.S., I do make six ounces in each cup. So I have a total of 12 ounces. Um, I notice at least cause I, I go by ounces, um, and I notice when I'm using Julie's molds, it holds just about six ounces, give or take. Um, sometimes I'll have a little bit extra, which is totally fine with me. I'd rather have a tiny bit extra than not enough. So I'm going to go ahead and try this again. This time again, I'm the only difference is um, I'm going to be using my Liquitex acrylic ink in one and then the other I'm going to use my octopus inks because they're very intense in color as well. Um, I also don't have my resin sitting out to where it gets warm so there there is a difference I don't know um, I, I do know that Julie was wondering how she gets the long um, set longer cell lines or the shorter so that could be a possibility julie if you're watching um maybe it could be not letting the resin sit uh, until it gets to a certain temperature um i usually use mine because it i feel like the work time it takes such a long time anyways to do everything that by the time they get to almost finished the resin's already heating up so it's already starting to do its magic um, at least that has been my experience. I have not seen, I have seen when I wait till it gets heated, it does not come out the same. So I don't know if that could be the difference or not. Who knows? Um, but I love the idea of trying different products against the one that I know that really works. So these are two separate different types of molds. This is the super chunky from Julie. Um, this one is more of the straight edge, but it still has the crystals look inside. I did today get some instant silicone mold from Let's Risen. So I'm hoping that I could take one of my coasters and try to make another mold so I could have two super chunkies side by side. Um, obviously, Julie's is way better. Um, I'm not sure how the Let's Risen is going to work, but we'll, I, I'm going to try it off camera, that is, <laughs> in case you're wondering if I plan on using it today. So, I really have been wanting to use my turquoise ink uh, from Liquitex. I love blues. Blues are my absolute favorite. They're my go-to in everything. So, to be fair for this test... I'm obviously going to use the teal from Octopus Inks. Um, I may have to add a little bit of either the Peacock or the Smurf, maybe the Smurf, 
we'll see how the blue turns out in the cup compared to this blue. But I just, the idea is I want to see if there's a difference. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to get my paper cups ready. Sorry, I am. Again, if you've watched my other videos, you'll notice I'm the most disorganized. And I mean disorganized artists out there. It's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> you know, if you guys, I don't know why I have carpet. It's, it's, we've been, yeah. So anyways, that's another whole story. I need to really not have carpet, but, uh, let's see. I need the white. And so I need a white for this one. And then that white for here. And then I need two for the gold. So together I need six cups. And again, I need to move some of the stuff away because I know for a fact I'm going to start spilling things. And I should probably change my channel to Klutzy Amy. <laughs> so, um, anyways, I'm just so excited that Julie mentioned my name. <laughs> it just made my day. I've been following her for a very long time. I am a huge fan. Her stuff is out of this world she really does a fabulous job um so um okay so let's get started um i'm gonna go ahead and start pouring for the colors now for the colors for the inks i prefer to do it's probably about almost halfway in these little paper cups. I think it's about halfway. So I'm about to drop a few things. Oh my gosh, everything's falling. Oh Lord. Oh, I just dropped glitter all over the carpet. Oh my God. <laughs> I swear. It does not fail. What, what is wrong with me? Anyways, before I go any further, please hit that like and subscribe. Um, if you find me hilarious, most people do because usually where I work, I have a tendency of making people laugh because, yeah, I just am one of those people that should walk around with a bubble wrap because I'm always making mess. Yeah, I got, you know, I got pink glitter all over. God, <sighs> I don't know when I will learn. Um, okay, let's just get started okay so this is the turquoise from Liquitex acrylic ink if you've been following me since I used to do fluid art um, I was I used to use Liquitex uh, for other things as well so um, I need something to I usually start with three to four drops, see how the color looks. If I need to add more, I add more. If it looks good, then I, I just leave it as is. And there is such a difference when you're working with reds, blues, yellows on how much color you have to use. Um, you will notice that some, some colors you have to use more than you would of another, which is pretty normal. When I was doing fluid art, that was definitely the case. And it also depends on the brand you're using. I'm just adding three more drops. So that was that's a total of seven drops in here. Uh, and I'll be honest, I usually don't count my drops. I know I don't. But I know a lot of you have been very eager to try this. So I will count for you. And I love using these sticks. By the way, I got them on Amazon. They're from Unicone. Um, they're not the sticks. They're white. So you can really see your color on the stick. That's, I love that. I think that was, what, that was seven? Let's just do eight, nine, ten drops total. Again, this is the acrylic ink. So obviously... I may have to use less or more when it comes to the alcohol inks, 
most likely less because octopus is extremely um, intense in color. I think that's good. I use, just so you know, I use the inks as my light color when you're using, doing a Laramar. Um, the gold I use as the dark and that's why I pour last. And that's how it comes out the way it does, in case anyone's wondering. So let's do the teal, and let's see how that works. We may not have to use the other two colors. Again, I'm just going to start with three drops. One, two, three. Oh, let's not put that there. Definitely going to need some more drops. And this is why I don't keep my resin out to get warm. As you can tell, it takes a long time just mixing the colors. By the time I start pouring, it's already been sitting out for some time and it's already starting to get warmed up. So hopefully that helps as to why I don't wait until it gets a certain temperature because it just... It just takes... I feel like I'd be cutting my time short and be rushing if I were to wait. Four, five, six, Seven. Let's just try seven and see where we get. This is the peacock. So I believe I did seven drops of the teal. And this will be a total of three drops of the peacock. To make of a total of ten drops. Okay. So for the gold and these teacups, these paper cups... I do half of what I did with, oh, geez, sorry, <laughs> um, than what I did with the actual, the blue colors. So um, I, at least for me, I do a lot of practice off camera, and I notice the more white I use, it does not come out very well. So um, I have been using less risen in a cup and just working with that. So... That's about good. It's about a fourth of a cup. Let me pour what's left in here. I'm sorry, this is for the gold. What? I'm talking white when I'm, I'm doing the work on the gold. Jeez Louise. Um, yeah, for the gold, I also don't use a lot as well. The, I use more of the inks than I do of the paste and the white, if that makes sense. So these are the golds. And like last time, I don't want it to overtake. So this is why I only fill them up about a fourth in these paper cups. And I believe these paper cups are three or four ounces. I'll have to double check because I got them on Amazon and Unfortunately, I don't pay attention to that stuff. Um, it's probably not what you wanted to hear. And I have my sticks in the resin, so I can't stick them in the gold. What in the world? Okay. So we're just going to take the wooden sticks out. Obviously, I messed up. Um, you know what? I can use these for my white. Let me get two pick extra ones. Okay, I'll use these for my white because I don't need the sticks for the white. There we go. Okay. So... KP pigments, they're very potent in color. I always steer my pigments first, just because it 
does have a tendency of settling down. You want to make sure it's nice and even all the way around. And then I wipe a lot off because again, this is so potent. You, that's all you need. And now you can watch the magic. And like I mentioned in my video before, the reason why I chose the pigment, uh, the pigment paste versus the mica powders, pigment paste is mica powder just sitting in resin A for a really long time. It already has been mixing very well, and you're not going to get that some powdery look or um, I don't know if they call it dragon skin, but you're not going to get that where it settles down to the bottom. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is a piece I did, and I mean, look, it looks like a brain. <laughs> I mean, and that's what the what it does. So I wanted to make sure that did not happen again. I did not like this piece at all. Um, I have friends saying that they loved it, and I'm like, I don't know what's wrong with you because it looks horrible. <laughs> um, but, you know, art is in the behold of the of the person. So you see how I just used one stick and that's all I need because that's how pigmented it is. This is why I love the KP. I When I use other pigments, I sometimes have to dip a couple times. I don't have to do that with this. So again, I'm going to do a nice stir, really get in there and wipe and I'm literally scraping on the edge and the magic so again I start with three drops of this to see where it's at okay That looks perfect, actually. Yeah, I really like starting with just three drops of the casting craft. Um, I've been trying this other technique that I learned from resincourses.com, and um, it's not working out. <laughs> so I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to try next time with this resin. I've been using J Diction. It wasn't working, so now I'm going to try with this one next time, and hopefully I get better results. But every brand of resin, resin has different velocity, I've noticed. Um, so even with the J-Diction, it said two to one deep pour. I can tell when I'm steering it, it is way different than the Platinum Ultra Clear. It, a night, just night and day. And this is why I use the Platinum Ultra Clear for this specific technique. I've tried the J Diction and it did not work at all. Um, I'm hoping they come out with like a 3 to 1. Um, because I think that will be what makes the difference. Perfect. Pour... And I do just enough to really cook the bottom. I don't want to do any more up for the white because every time I use the white, it just, at least a cast and craft, it really takes over. So, um, just as a forewarning, you just want to coat the bottom is all. And then make sure all the edges are met. Now, with this specific resin, I notice I can do my little blowtorch, wherever it is. Where, oh, there it is. I swear, when my husband used it, he never puts it right. 
He puts it in high and then I use it and I end up burning my stuff. Okay. That's all I'm doing. This is very quick, constant movement. So you're not burning anything. You're just getting the bubbles out. Okay, so here's the magic. Let's put in our inks. Let's start with the octopus inks. And when you pour in, you want to do quick. So you're pushing those colors out. Okay. This is my Liquitex. Oh, that color is so pretty. Oh my God. I'm like in love already. Okay, now for the magic. Gosh, this reminds me of my Pirate's Gold painting I did. One, two, three. One, two, three. Sorry, it helps me to count so I can move my hands fast. Because I, I, I don't want it to go too slow because then it could just not do what I want it to do, which is pushing the stuff on the bottom outwards so that it starts shrinking in. Now what I'm going to do... Let's just make sure my edges are covered. God, it's so pretty. Mm, mm, mm. It's like having chocolate. It's just gorgeous. This is, I mean, this is literally, the whole art thing has been, isn't that interesting how it's turning green? I wonder if there's some type of yellow in the gold. Can you see that in there? Huh. I'll be very interested to see how this turns out with the blue. Maybe there's some type of yellow they're using in the gold. This is interesting. So I didn't get that with the uh, magenta. I'm gonna go ahead and put you on a time lapse to save time, enjoy, and wait for the review.
Okay, we are back. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I already demolded them. I turned them upside down so um, I can show you what they look like. Oh my gosh. Okay, so here we go. Um, I think I'm gonna do that one second. I really wanna do this one first. So let's show you the back. Look how awesome. Now, this came out totally different. Um, something I realized when I was rewatching my video um, from the other day that I poured these in the wrong order. So in that video, I did gold first and then the color. And here I did the color first and then the gold. So I did them out of order, which means I don't know what this is gonna look like on the other side. So it's gonna be interesting to see. Again, if just to remind you that this one is with the Liquitex Acrylic Ink. This one's with the Octopus Inks, alcohol inks, okay? So it's probably why you see such a difference in the two. Um, and again, it all has to do with the brand that you use, the um, type of liquids that you're using, how they're made, how much you're putting in, because you could probably get different results every time depending on what you're using. So anyways, okay, so let's get going. So this is the back. That's the side. I really love these crystals from um, Miss Julie at Pouring Your Heart Out. I am in love with her molds. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, let's see. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> Do you see that? This is exactly what I was trying. I said in a previous video where I actually had fails and I'm not sure if you remember, but I was saying I saw these on the edge and this took, uh, the white took over the front, but you could barely see these on the side. I thought, how can I figure out how to get this through the whole thing? That would be so awesome. And I did it. Oh my God. <sighs> wow. And you can, you barely could see the gold. I mean, so if you look up really close, you can see the gold, but it's very faint. I am obsessed with this. It literally looks like cracked glass. It's what it looks like. It looks like cracked glass. That's exactly what it looks like. Oh my gosh. I wonder if I still have that piece. So this was a piece I did the other day. This is the back side, and I really had liked the edges. And I thought, oh, how cool it would be to get all the way to here. Um, and then this is the front. And right through here is where I saw those lines. And I was thinking, gosh, how can I get that into here? Because this looks like a brain. I mean, it looks really weird. Anyways, um, and I did it. Oh my God, I'm so excited. So the good thing is, is I videotaped this. So now I can rewatch and see how I created this and see how I can make more of this. So I'm really excited. So again, this is with the Liquitex Acrylic Ink. I'm not sure if it's gonna happen like this with every acrylic ink, because they're all made a little bit differently. Um, I'm obsessed with Liquitex. I it's a, a brand that I used when I was doing my flowing fluid art. And so I continue to use it. Um, it's very readily available at all uh, Michaels or craft stores here in the US. Um, so it's definitely really easy to get. Um, and you can also get it on Amazon. They come in so many different colors. <sighs> but that came out beautiful. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so let's look at this one. Now this one, the back. I mean, seriously, it almost looks like dough that's folded. Does that? I mean, how weird is that? That's so weird. And how weird it is that these had the same technique, just the middle ingredient was different and that's it. You saw me pour. I mean, everything else was the same and two different backs. 
That's shocking. Okay. Oh, okay, so in here is the edge. Again, this is made from Julie's molds. I love them. Absolutely love them. And oh my God, look at that. Have you ever seen something so beautiful? This is crazy. I could definitely see though, it almost looks like my mold, like maybe it wasn't as level because I have more of the crust over here than this side. Um, interesting, I'll have to check. Uh, I have a level thing that will measure it out for me so I can make sure. I definitely need to do a little top coat. I can see the little tiny bubbles and I don't know if it's the mold. I think it's the mold because it's been, I noticed it's been happening on every single one of them. So what I usually use for top coats because it's so much easier is I use the hot, um, high velocity uh, UV resin. And I love J Diction and it's very fast and simple. And because it's so thick, the stuff right here, you can easily put it wherever you want to and it won't move. And it self levels and then you just cure it within minutes. I absolutely love using that as a top coat for almost all my projects. But wow, look at that. It almost looks like stones. Look at that. I mean, how amazing is that? Wow. And I love how the blue came in, but it's like, I don't know, it's all around. Wow. Look at these two separate techniques. It's like, how in the world does that happen? I, I swear, I feel like I'm a scientist every time I do resin because you just don't know how it's going to come out. And it's all about the chemistry and the different ingredients. It's just shocking. These are just insanely beautiful. Um, so I am, I'm in love. Absolutely in love. I just like, oh my gosh. Oh, look at that though. And... I really do believe, and I'm starting to really believe this because I notice with other artists, they measure their resin out a little bit differently. And even though it's a two to one, they still put, I think, more of the A than the B, more than what the actual recipe calls for. I follow exactly what it says on the bottle and I get these little tiny cells. So I don't know if that makes a difference or not. I'm starting to truly believe that's what it is. I also don't let my resin sit to get warm. Um, and maybe that's the difference. I don't know. I really don't know. Um, again, the resin I used was the Platinum um, Ultra Clear. Um, and all the other products you can find in America. Um, I know for Octopus inks that I use on this one. Uh, Laura's Art Corner. Um, she is fabulous and now carries Octopus Inks. I know she is getting more colors in soon. Um, it's just a matter of it takes a while to be shipped from Germany. <laughs> so, um, gosh, you know what I didn't notice until now? Do you, it's like really super light on the outside, almost like it's glowing. That's crazy. Oh my gosh. So which one do you which one do you like the most? I don't know which one to choose. I think they both have their own special qualities. Um I definitely have to get right here in the bottom part and just file that out or um I use a rotary tool because I think it's a lot easier to just sand that back a little bit. And then I just need to do my UV top coats on them. So that way you can't see those little um, holes that I keep seeing that's driving me crazy. Um, 
But yeah, it just turned out so well. Oh my gosh. Okay, so tell me in the comments which one you like. This is A, this is B. One, two. Um, same technique, just a different ingredient for the middle. And this was all by accident, because I actually meant to put the gold first and then the blue seconds. So it totally came out way different than what I was expecting. But I'm very excited. This is a very happy surprise. Um, I usually don't get happy surprises. I have a lot more fails than I do good ones. Um, but that's also because I like testing different ideas and techniques and pouring differently or, you know, what have you. I have so many ideas in my head. It's ridiculous. Um, anyways, um, oh, and I do want to share with you guys what I made the other day. I didn't make a video of it, but... I just thought it was really pretty. I'm not sure if you could see that. I was trying to recreate this technique that I did for my aunt. It didn't exactly come out like that. I think it has to do with the mold and how deep it is. I definitely, when I did create the, um, the coasters for my aunt, I used the cheap um, molds from um, Amazon. And so I think that is what made the difference is this mold was definitely way too deep. Um, obviously, I don't have to pour that much. Um, but for some reason in my head, I keep thinking I do. I know it sounds weird. Anyways, <laughs> but uh, let me know what you think. I will be back. Don't forget to hit the subscribe, like button, comment, um, share my video. All the help, you know, helps my channel out. And don't forget to go to Julie's, um, you know, channel. She has amazing videos. She's an amazing teacher. Um, I honestly, I think her accent's what makes everything better. <laughs> I just have the boring American accent. And, um, I mean, maybe it's not boring to people if you're from a different country. I don't know. But I always think us American accents are really, really boring. We're just so flat. <laughs> There's no up and down. <laughs> Anywho. Um, God, I, really, I really like this one. Um, okay. Till next time. Thanks for watching.